Hello everyone, this is Nicholas Algorithm Trading. We, we help you to build your own trading boards and automate your trading strategies. And in this video, I would like, I would like to introduce an uh, overview of how you can run your own exchange APIs. And I'm going to use KuCoin Exchange as an example to, illust to illustrate the whole process. With that said, uh, we have no application with KuCoin Exchange. Okay, so let's let's jump into the uh, what consists of an exchange API. First of all, you have an uh, exchange server, and we also have a client, which is ourselves. The client wants to talk to talk to the exchange to either get information from the exchange, or they want uh, the client want to update some information uh, on the exchange, such as you know placing an order, making an order. So there are two parts. The first part is public API, where you do not need the uh, API keys, for example. You can get information uh, uh, with just a URL. And there is a second part, which is private APIs. It will require authentications because uh, it, it involves some you know, changes on your account, such as you, you know your account balance. You can also uh, place an order on your account. You, uh, you need to also uh, you, you need to prove that you are the owner of this account. That's why authentication is needed here. In order to talk to the exchange, right? And there are co there are four common methods. The first one is called get. Uh, it basically reads information on the exchange. Second one is called post. It it will be adding a new record to the exchange. The third one is put. It is about modifying an existing record, such as modifying an order. And the first one is called delete. It's about deleting a record, such as deleting an order from the exchange. Okay, with um, with this particular overview, I think uh, you have a general idea of uh, what what is roughly uh, exchange API and uh, uh, what other ways we can interact with the exchange APIs. So uh, in this video, I'm going to uh, give you a demo uh, on the Coco Exchange API. And I already wrote a file in Python programming. This is a uh, uh, Google Exchange API wrapper. So all you need is a key secret and passphrase. Then you can use start to use this Python API wrapper to uh, to do a lot of things on the Exchange. And I'm going to demonstrate demonstrate you the things you can do with this app with this API file. Okay, so let's get started on this. And uh, the, by the way, the, the code file, uh, the Python file, and this Jupyter notebook file will be uploaded to the uh, GitHub uh, associated with this YouTube channel. So I'll put the link in the dis description below so you can download the file and try it out on your own PC. Okay, so let's write. First, you need to include import the library and you need your key secret and passphrase in order to use the API. In this video I'm not going to show you how you can create the API keys uh, but I will put the, the link to another video which is called um, authentication uh, is part two of the of how to write your own exchange API uh, in the description below so uh, make sure you check out that video so you know how to get your own API keys and API secret uh, in order to use this uh, API file. So, so next we, we load this API um, with the key and secret and with the API uh, loaded right we will, we will be able to do a lot of things. The first I'm going to introduce you the things you can you can do with uh, pub, public APIs which is the the, the upper side in this on this slide. Okay, so first thing you can do is you can get all the symbols on the market. If we go to the official documentations, it uh, it will be here market data uh, symbols. It tells you uh, this API endpoint gives you uh, a list of available trading currencies on this exchange. So if you run it, it will return all the uh, active market on the Google Exchange along with some information about each market. Okay, so uh, the next public API I'm going to introduce is uh, order book. Again, I recommend you to go through the, you know, the the part, the their official documentation. They will tell you the details about each API endpoint. 
So in this case, on the, oh, the book is get a list of open orders for a symbol. So if you go to their website, it's about getting, you know, the this part, this is all the book. The lower side is buy it, we, the others want to buy, and the upper side is uh, the others that wants to sell. So here, uh, let's say we want to get BNB market. Okay, so we want to uh, get the order books for BNB, and we get the the depths of twenty. This is the depths of the order books we want to return, right? And uh, let's say the byte is four o five three. I think it's already changed. It's we will have a delay. Let's try again. Uh, four o five one eight. Four o five one eight. Yeah, this time is correct. It should be real time. Um, and uh, the the next public API I'm going to introduce is uh, trade history. If you go to their website, is this corresponds to this part? It's got recent trade. We will show you how uh, the most recent trade uh, in this data field, including the price, size, and the site. Okay, so. Uh, Finally, I think this one is most important uh, information is the K lines is what you see here. Uh, I think a lot of prof professional traders are using the K lines to make their decisions. So this piece of data is is very important for you to make decisions, mm, and you can get it uh, via the API endpoint. So here I'm going to demonstrate you can how you can get you know a, a market for BTC USDT uh, with interval of one hour. Uh, and I'm getting the the past 24 hours of data, so you can see it here, right? The first, uh, so all the information, all the candlestick information are in this data arrays, and uh, to get the meaning of this data as well, you can refer to their official documentations. It should be in history and the key lines. Here they uh, explains the the returns from the API endpoint. So the for example, the first item is called timestamp. Second item is open price, close, close, close price, and high and low and volume. So which corresponds to you know the data here. Okay, so up until here we have introduced the uh, the public API in the point, and uh, next I'm going to going to introduce the private API in the point. So the first um, private API private API I'm going to introduce is. Uh, how you can get your account information, such as the account balance, how much you know, how much money you had in your account. So in this demo, uh, uh, I have uh, deposited some uh, BNB into my account. So there are many two accounts in my uh, in, in in my KuCoin exchange. Uh, the main account, the trading account. Trading account is where you can trade, you can place some orders. Main account, I think, is mainly for deposit and withdrawal. So in this case, I have 0 0.15 in my main account and 0 0.05 in my trading account. So let's say uh, if we can get the information we want. So, okay, so we have uh, the data field has two accounts. The first one is main account, second one is trade account, and 0 0.15 in the main account. 0.05 in the trade account, so which is the same as what we saw on the website. So the API returns the correct information, and there is also a parameter. You can actually, you do, if you do not need all the account information, you can specify which account you want to return. If I specify the account type to be main, it will only return the main account information. And uh, with the second API here, a private API here, you can transfer a set between accounts. Let's say I want to transfer a set from main account to trading account, so I can do more trading. Then you can trans. Let's say I want to transfer BNB from trade. Oh, I think uh, let's do it in the reverse way, right? From main account to trade account, and the amount is zero point zero five. Let's do it. And by right, uh, because just now the main account is zero point one five, right? So by right, it should reduce by 0.05, and uh, you should have 0.1 now. And the trade account just now has 0.05, so you should have 0.1 now as well. So let's check in on the website again. Main account 0.1, correct. Trading account 0.1 as well. So the 
transfer internal transfer uh, endpoint is also working well. Uh, next, you can place an order uh, on your on the exchange. Uh, let's say we want to place a sell order on BNB uh, USDT with a limit price of uh, five hundred and the size we let's set let's set it with zero point zero five. And um, uh, I, oh, I would recommend you to try limit order first before you try market orders because it's always safer uh, because the order won't be executed if the price you know is uh, is below 500 so you can guarantee your entry price basically and let's place this order and uh, by right you should be able to see the order appear here down here the open orders so it's called limit orders I'm selling BNB on uh, 500 price and the amount is 0.05 of course it's not going to be filled because the current market price is way lower than 500 so um, you can get the, uh, the status of this order with, uh, with this command get order so we'll show you like you're placing an order on with price 500 and it's, uh, it's currently active the field the deal size shows you how much has been filled because uh, I, nothing has been filled, so this is, will be zero. And if you feel this order is no longer useful, you can cancel it. And by cancel the order, um, the order sh should disappear from this place. And uh, if you try get order again, um, the order should uh, the the active flag here should be false, which means the order is no longer active. Okay, so uh, the next. API endpoint I'm gonna show you is called stop orders. Stop orders is useful if you want to, you know, cut your losses. Basically, if you enter, for example, if you enter a long position, uh, but the market plus actually goes against you, in this case, you can, you know, put a stop order. In case the price drops below a certain threshold, then you're gonna cut your losses. So, for example, let's say if the price drops below 400. I'm going to sell the, my BNB at price of 399 and uh, again I recommend you to use limit orders just in case anything in the market goes crazy okay let's place a stop order you get a stop ID here and uh, here the stop order will be appear in the advanced orders in this case here right you're selling the BNB USDT uh, it's telling the exchange if the price drops 400 below 400, you sell at 399. Okay, again, you can also get the order status via this function, and it shows you the order is currently active, and you are selling at 399 with a stock price of uh, 400. And uh, Again, if you don't like, don't like this stop order, you can always cancel it. And uh, if you get the order again, yeah, here yeah, the active app will be false. If you go back here, you will no longer appear here. It should appear in the order history here. Those orders are all cancelled by other APIs. So as you can see, right, you can all do all the cool stuff with uh, API just using a uh, program language without you to actually log into a Logging in into your account and place all the manually. Uh, with API, you you can actually do, you know, placing orders, checking prices, uh, checking your strategies you know, within a second, right? which is very fast, and you don't have to sit in front of your computer the whole day. Uh, let the let the program uh, do this automatically for you. Okay, so I guess uh, uh, this is uh, 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 all the things I want to show in the. In this video uh, today, uh, finally, um, uh, I would uh, I, I would uh, I want to emphasize that uh, uh, this these two files will be uploaded to the GitHub. So if you want to try, you can always download and try it yourself. You can also use it in your trading bot. That's totally fine. And uh, uh, finally, if you like this video, right? I hope uh, you can you know hit the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, this will, you know, encourage uh, me a lot to produce more videos in the future. Um, okay, I think uh, that's it for today. Uh, thanks again.